I love these old fair lines, and I say old because it's 2006, because they're so beautifully built. Now, the latest fair lines are beautifully built too, but it's no secret that in some intervening years, there were some boats that weren't built as well as this. So today, I'm going to give you a full walk around this Phantom 50. I'm going to show you the good, the bad and the ugly. And then I'm going to go through all the finance costs, the running costs, the maintenance costs. And then at the end, I'm going to wrap it all up and give it a score. So if you know if it's worth buying. So let's jump in. Okay, Mr. Brightside, I like that. This boat's got a passerelle, or some of you call it an ironing board. It's not an ironing board, it's a passerelle that lifts the tender and enables you to walk onto the quayside if you're abroad. This platform is a lovely size, but it hasn't got high-low. High-low didn't come out until a year or two later and Sunseeker were first to the high-low party. So coming to the cockpit, Now, what I like, no, actually, what I love about these fair lines is this boat is 16 years old, which is the same age as my eldest daughter, Georgia, which is quite old, because 16 years ago seems like a long time to me. But what I love about these fair lines is it still looks nearly like the day it came out of the factory. Um, Obviously these chairs weren't included, but look at the teak. Look at the steps up to the flybridge. Look at the stainless steel. I don't think they're the original um, seating cushions there, but they still look in keeping with the time. The door, look at this door, Daz. It's still, it's all really, really well built. So, it's time to take the shoes off and show you my socks today, Des, which are my dancing man socks. What are yours like, son? Uh, I think I win. I win. I wouldn't say you win. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think I do. Look, they're lovely and bright. Um, so, let's jump into the saloon. Now... It's quite mild today. We're filming this in November 22, but I spilt coffee. Well, I'll show you. I spilt coffee all down my shirt this morning. So I've got to keep this on, otherwise I look like a right state. Well, I look like a right state anyway, but I look worse than normal. So come into the saloon. Look at all this space. Look, look. Look at this sofa, it's huge. Come in, Des. Look. Look, I could sleep here, look. In fact, I'm gonna give it a go. Oh, there's loads of room. Now this is cherry interior. This is eucalyptus, did you know that? I didn't know that, no. Well, you do now. That is eucalyptus. It kind of looks like cherry that's been stained but this is the normal cherry and as most of you know this went out of fashion but it's coming back like <laughs> <laughs> no my socks are nice cherry is coming back we're starting to sell more and more gloss wood on the new fair lines than we have for years so it tends to be walnut gloss now and not cherry gloss but these gloss woods really do ooze quality and if we swap round, I'm going to show you my favourite bit of the whole boat. It's the cutlery. Look at that. And can you see the Fairline symbol on there? And all the velvet lined. This is a key part of why people bought Fairlines. The attention to detailing throughout this boat is great. It's got a high-low TV there. I won't bother showing it to you because it's very, very small. So let's show you the galley. Okay, so here's the galley. It's galley up, but it's not galley up aft, which is what people demand these days. But it's not far to walk to the cockpit. As you can see, it's just across the carpet there. So this boat was kind of before its time because before this boat came out, most of the galleys were down. 
Um, and also, I'm really, really happy to say, this actually has a dishwasher, which is worth having, look. It's like one of those mini slim ones, and it's actually got two trays. So, um, actually, I don't mind that dishwasher. So I also got a drinks cabinet. And uh, when it was new, it would have come with some lovely tumblers, but someone's nicked them. We can include them if you want to buy it. You've got a fridge here, which, oh, which is absolutely fine. Apart from the, the freezer, oh, freezer door. Let's shut that, that's fine. Got a microwave. We've got a three burner hob sink, and we've got storage up here for the plates, which have got the lovely little Fairline crest on there, see there? Where are these made? GB. And we've got a little cupboard there for pots and pans. They're not Fairline quality. You've got a bin here, twin sinks. You've also got a really nice cutting board. And this is a Corian top, which is actually quite nice. So the galley, and you've got all this storage around the back of it here, the galley gets full marks. Okay, before I go and show you the lower helm, can you see this little stainless strip on the floor here? Well, this boat is three cabin, but it's before the age of the mid-master. So there was space between the engines and the cabins, which they used to keep the noise down. But also, it gives you extra storage. Look at the size of that. Now, I don't know if you can see how big it is. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll get in it. Because that's the only way you're going to see how big it is, because it is absolutely huge. And I'm huge. And I think I can go right in it. Oh, there's a fridge. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, there's a fridge, Des. Nothing in it to eat, though. And it goes all the way. I don't even see that way. I tell you what, you can put another cabin in here. They've got a light. And we've got a little door which goes into the bilge. Now, this will eat up all your provisions you need on a boat like this. So one of the advantages to not having a mid-cabin is you have lots and lots of storage. It's a little bit whiffy down here. It was not me. We might need to... Get some butter to get you back out. What? The, this is the lower helm and it's got twin helm seats, which is great. The steering is to port, but I know the first thing you're gonna ask, has it got a shout window? And the answer is yes. And it works. Look how big it is. Oi, get the fenders in. And if you look behind you, Daz, I've got another one. Look at that. Get the fenders in. See, so we've got double windows. And actually, I'm going to leave those open for a bit because it's quite warm in here, isn't it? Red light, so you've got can read wrap, map read. It's also got this one's got a little remote control. And if you come around here, I want to show you a couple of details. On these older fair lines, all the trip switches are here, and they're all simple little rockers. Look, off, off, on. That one I'm going to leave on because it's got the battery charge. I'm going to turn. Oh, I need lighting on and you've got the, the amp gauges and everything here. You've also got the poo-poo tank gauge here with the, the gauge on and off and the pump out. That's a brilliant place to put it because on most boats, it's down by your feet. So you're kind of on your knees pumping out that. So it's a double whammy. Um, obviously, navigation's moved on a bit. That's uh, an E120. Uh, still does the job, but it's touch button. It's not um, pinch and zoom like your modern uh, GPS equipment. You've got paired gauges on the top here, twin RPM gauges. You've got the rudder indicator gauge, temperature, oil, and fuel volts, etc. And that's the water tank. And you've got a map reading light, which was standard. Now, if you consider all these headlinings are from 2006, 16 years old, they're in good shape. Now, I won't name any names, but some manufacturers, these headlinings pop after a couple of years. So actually, this is doing very, very well. Great visibility out. Unlike some of the more modern fair lines, you have got a mullion in the middle, 
But most of the time, I'm gonna shut that window. Oh, so I've turned it off. Crikey, it's blowing gale, isn't it? Um, most of the time, you're on the flybridge driving it, so you don't need to worry about driving it from down here. Now, I personally, if you look at the patina on this seat, this is the original leather seat, you can see it's all cracked, and that's either one thing you'd want to look at or not. I think it could do with um, reconalizing, and that will look as good as new. But it just shows you the quality of the leather that it's still in this shape after all that time. Okay, so if you come down, we've got three cabins. The master is at the bow, which is how it used to be. You see the hatches on the floor for checking your bilge pumps and make sure the bilge is dry. And this is the master cabin. So come in. Quality Fairline mattress. Not quite as good as the princess ones, which are vice spring, but it's still a good night's sleep. In here, she's starting to look her age slightly. I personally, We'll change these blue panels to a light panel, color like a, um, a gray or a white, and the bed surround. That doesn't cost much, and it is something we can do. But actually, the size of the bed and everything else is good. You can see, like, I'm six foot one. I've got plenty of space. These are air-conditioned vents. I mean, look at that woodwork. That is curved woodwork. The amount of work that's gone into that at the factory is unbelievable. These are the cupboards for all your oddments and socks and things. But if you look closely, Daz, you'll see that's all made from one plank of wood. So all the grains match. Look, you can see the grains matching here. So that is the attention to detail. And look, this is like, a, sorry I keep saying it, but 16 years old. Now, back in the day, people didn't use their phones as much as they do now so something to watch out for is the plug sockets are down on the floor not beside your bed so again if I was having this boat I think I would get some extra plug sockets put one either side of the bed they have got reading lights um, and you've got a lovely wardrobe this side oh Oil extract shampoo. I love that actually. Do you need some shampoo, Dad? Dandruff. <laughs> <No. laughs> oh, some coffee cups, just where you'd expect some coffee cups. Look, they need a clean. Um, and there's another one behind you there. So his and hers wardrobes, and that one is clear. Again, showing her age a little bit, you've got curtains, because that was the fashion at the time, whereas these days we fit blinds. Again, it's an easy change for us to make. But actually, the space in here is quite good. And look at the headroom. I've got lo loads of room. You all right? Yep, good. And then we're going to the bathroom. Yeah. Right, you might expect a bathroom on a boat of this age to smell. It doesn't smell. Can you smell anything? No. Nope. No, it smells good. You've got plenty of water, um, space in the cupboards. Obviously, this top is looking a little bit dated in blue, but look how clean it is. Look how immaculate the sealant is. Look at the fittings. Everything is like the day it came out of the factory. The cupboards, the woodwork, the shower. Right, we've got to do the floss test. Oh, we've got to do the shower test first. The shower's huge. No problem there. Look, big teak grated floor. That's the little bracket. Plenty of room in here. I'd say actually there's room for two if you're that way inclined. Um, so that's quite a nice shower. The floss test, I mean, it's a joke. It passes it in every direction. Remember, this is the ensuite to the master. So it's absolutely great. Okay, so walking aft, we have the port cabin, which is a twin and it's got the sun cushions in, so we're just gonna only quickly show you that because I haven't been bothered to clear it all out, sorry, but it has got a wardrobe and twin beds, and it's got a double. You could have another twin, this one's got the double, and you've got a nice wardrobe. Oh, I've got a little um, bit of detail I wanna show people. I used to sell these new at the boat show, and I remember at the London boat show, Earl's Court, that's a while ago, and it does. It's going back some. It's going back some. 
I used to hide my wallet up here during the show because no one else would find it. <laughs> not that they had much in it, but um, this is the electrics under the dash. And if you have a little look, you'll see, look at all the buzz bars, probably a bit dark, but you can see everything's clipped and beautifully made. Everything's wired, everything's got zip ties, so it doesn't move. This is what you pay for when you buy a new or a used Fairline. I'll just put that back. And I think, I think this one here does. You didn't know this either, I think it's the trips. Yeah, they're the trips. I'm amazed. That is nice, isn't it? Now I'm gonna turn off the hot water because I've turned the battery charger off. Where is the hot water? My eyes aren't very good. Can you see it? Are your eyes any good? They're worse than yours. Are they? Uh, oh, I can't see it. I'll oh, get someone else to do it. Engine bay lights. Anyway, it's all very neat and well organised. Now, this boat has got one little trick up its sleeve, another storage trick. Do you know which one it is? Which one? This one, under the stairs. So you lift the stairs up. Then you've got the washer dryer. So that's tucked neatly out of the way. Now I've got a quick story about one of these washer dryers. I sold one of these boats brand new in 06. In 07, when the boat was still in warranty, the washer dryer broke. Not the boat, the washer dryer. We had to take it down into about 25 pieces, then lift it out bit by bit, and then take the new one apart in 25 pieces and put it back in. When I say we, it wasn't me, um, one of the engineers did it, but it was a right pain. So if you need to change one of these, strap in, it's a pain in the ass. But notice, the boat was fine, it was the washing machine. So let's go to the flybridge. So bearing in mind this is a 50 foot boat, I think the flybridge is huge. You've got seating here for about six or seven people. Um, as I can demonstrate. That table looks a bit cheap nowadays. Most boats now have teak. You could either put a teak inlay on there or just put a totally new teak table in. You've got the radar and the sat TV. That's the spotlight. GPS, horns and aerials are all there. You've got, walking up to the helm, you've got the plotter, same repeaters up here, autopilot, depth. This boat's got a bow and a stern thruster. Stern thruster is for people that can't drive very well, like me. I like a stern thruster. Do you like a stern thruster, Daz? I love a stern thruster. Yeah. Um, all the gauges, compass, which you can see is discoloured over the years. These Volvo throttles, which are great. God, it's windy up here today. And the fore deck, which has got some cushions, which are in really, really good shape. And while you're up here, Daz, we can look, we can point at the office. There's our office over there. And there's the river, you see the river? Yeah, and there's the green fields. So this boat has also got a barbecue and a sink, which is there, all in good shape. And you've got a little fridge here, carling, eh? Yeah, not my type, of, I don't like carling. Do you like carling? No. It's not strong enough for me. Uh, and we've got a little cupboard there. Teak floor, nice grab handles. The depth of the flybridge bulwarks, these grab handles is good. And if we peek over the side, you'll see the side decks are a good, safe walkway to get to the bow. So all in all, the flybridge works really well. But let's go downstairs because it's too windy. So I'm going to quickly show you the engine bay hatch and the lazarette hatch. The engine bay one is here. Now these older boats, like the Squadron 58, etc., have got a lower centre of gravity because they haven't got the mid-master, so they haven't got to have the height. So because they haven't got the height, the engine room is more cramped. But if you pass me the camera, there's the engines there. You can see, look, they go nearly go up to the ceiling. So it is quite cramped, but 
the good thing about having the engines and the floor low is the boat has a lower center of gravity. And a lower center of gravity means that the boat has better sea keeping because it doesn't roll as much. And you don't need a gyro stabilizer as much. I won't bother going in this one, but this is the Lazarette. You've got the generator in there, which is an Onan. That's probably a 17.5 kVA. And you've got plenty of space for all your other bits and pieces. I can see he's put a life raft in here. In fact, that's a life raft there. And that's a life raft there. So whoever owned this boat before really, really took safety seriously. Now I've got one more little surprise for you. Now I thought, I bet you thought that was the end of the tour because we've done, showed you the three cabins. I've showed you the galley, the saloon, the flybridge, the platform, the engine bay and the lazarette. But this boat also has a crew cabin and it's hidden under here. Now, if you just stick your neck down there, it's a single bed, it's a toilet, it's a sink. It's not fantastic. Um, and as crew cabins go, it's probably not quite as bad as the Princess S60 and S65, because you have to go down so far, but it's in a similar ballpark to how cramped it feels. So. If you're claustrophobic, don't bother. In fact, don't bother. The, that crew cabin, you only sleep there if you're really, really in trouble. Or you've got a kid that's really annoying you. Put him in there. So now let's look at all the costs and the pros and cons of this boat. Okay, so I've done my little note sheet with all the costs, which takes ages. I, I'm getting a bit quicker, but there's a lot to cover. So first of all, let's go over the basics about what this boat costs. So this boat is currently up for £294,950. That's including UK VAT for UK use. And we are filming this in November 22. Um, a bank will require a 30% deposit, which is about 88950 which um, means the finance company could lend you up to £206,000 on a boat of this size and age. Is it your phone, Daz? That's all right. Um, £206,000 advance equates to £2,100 per month. Then that's on a 10-year straight line repayment. So the finance costs, if you were financing this boat, are gonna be about 25,000 pounds per year. But remember, most of that is capital and only a small portion of it is interest. Although at the moment, interest rates are going up, that will be a slightly bigger proportion of it, uh, but 25,000 pounds per annum. So let's move on to fuel. Okay, so let's move on to fuel. Um, the fuel, costs we will stand uh, the boat at a normal speed of 20 knots like we always do so let's put 20 knots on the screen um, this boat has got twin d12 715s now Daz, do you know what the d12 stands for d engine yeah and 12 one and two <laughs> <laughs> no 12 means 12 liters do you know that learn something new every day yeah so what's a d6 10. <laughs> um, so the fuel burn on these at 20 knots is 140 litres per hour. The fuel price in the UK at the moment is £1.75 per litre. And so therefore at 20 knots, this boat will burn £245 per hour. But remember, in that hour, you have done 20 nautical miles, which is quite a long way in the sea. The average UK user does 50 hours per year. When I say UK, average worldwide user, I know the Americans are very similar to us in terms of their engine hours. Um, average use is, is 50 hours per year. Now, because of what Nick Aquaholic said to me a few weeks ago, he said, look, James, you don't go straight out of the marine at 20 knots and do 50 hours at 20 knots. He's right, you don't. Um, so 20 hours of that, I've put that down to 10 knots and 30 hours of that, I've put to cruise. So the fuel cost is about 9,800 pounds per annum, which I don't think is too bad for 50 hours use of a boat of this size with your family. You'd go a long way on that. 
So let's move on to the fixed costs. Okay, so fixed costs. Um, a berth in the UK at the current time for a 50-foot boat is about £13,000. Now, I checked again today, and actually in Chichester on the south coast, you can get it for 10. And as you move towards um, Southampton Central and Pool, that can go up to 15,000. So 13,000 for the south coast of the UK. On the east coast, up where we are, you'd be paying quite a few thousand pounds less. But most people boat on the south coast will use 13,000. Now the servicing, this boat is engine, gearbox, prop with um, cutlass bearing in between and small rudders. No out drives, no Z drives, no V drive, no IPS, no out drive, no surface drive. It's the simplest way to power a boat. So the servicing on this boat is a very reasonable £4,000 per annum. That's £2,000 per engine and gearbox and including the generator. And that's because there's no maintenance of IPS drives or out drives required. Um, I did a Targa 44 the other week and the servicing cost was twice that. And that's because you have to service the IPS drives as well. Maintenance on this boat is very low too. It's about £4,000 per annum. It's the polishing, the anti-foul, etc, etc. Insurance, it's a cheaper boat. It's a bit older. If it's well maintained, insurance companies should quote you about £2,000 per annum. So your total costs are about £23,000 for the fixed costs, things that you can't really get away from if you want to have a boat like this and look after it. Now, before we move on to the variable costs, um, if you're enjoying these videos and this pricing that I do and, um, and the other stupid things that I do, then please press the subscribe button on the bottom of the screen. If you're enjoying this video, press the thumbs up. And if you do reply and ask me more questions, I do try and reply to every single comment, unless it's silly, in which case I press the delete button. So let's move on to the variable costs. Okay, so the variable cost we're going to put on the screen. Now, this boat's 295,000. It's done most of its depreciating. They were about 600 grand new. Um, but I would still bank on costing about 15 grand a year. Now, over the last few years, you might have made a profit, you might have lost nothing. But I think if you dial in 15,000 pounds a year, you're not going to be a million miles away. So let's call it 15 grand per annum. The fuel cost, well, we've already done that. That's 9,800. The finance costs, including capital repayments, are 23,000 pounds per annum. So your total variable costs are 47,800. Remember, don't just add all these up together because I'm putting them in different sections. So this is the variable cost, which includes the fuel cost I've already done and the finance cost. These are just things that you might need to find money for or cash flow for during the course of the year. So let's move on to my personal scoring for this boat. Okay, so these are my personal scores um, for the various sections. So we'll start with accommodation. It's got three cabins, it's got a master bow, a master in the bow, and it's got the crew cabin. I think it's got great accommodation. The saloon's lovely, the cockpit's great, the flybridge is fantastic. So I'm giving it nine out of 10 for accommodation. Style. Well, we'll show you on the screen um, a Phantom 50 um, from the outside, maybe a running shot so you can see how she looks. Obviously, with the round portholes and no big midship window for the master, she's starting to look dated. But I would say she looks classic. So it's one of those boats that I think is going to grow old gracefully. However, She's not the cutting edge design, so I do have to score her down for style, and I'll give her a 7 out of 10 for style. Okay, when it comes to fun, fun's the wrong word to be using um, on a Phantom 50. The Phantom 50 is a robust family cruiser that can tackle pretty much any sea you throw at it. This boat was hand laid from new with hand painted gel coat, two coats which they did with a four inch brush where is some of the more modern boats are sprayed so this is a robust family cruiser that will, will get you there safely 
So it's not really about blasting around and having fun. Have fun on board, but actually in terms of driving, it's not that type of boat. So I'm going to give it just a 7 out of 10 for fun. Running costs, well, as I've just told you, um, because it hasn't got any fancy drive systems, it's just engines and gearboxes, um, it's a very, very solid boat, and uh, it won't take an awful lot of looking after, especially as you've seen the previous owners have looked after this boat. So I'm going to give the running costs 7 out of 10. The next section is quality. Well, I hope you agree with me. Sitting on a 16-year-old boat, I don't feel like I'm sitting on a 16-year-old boat today. Everything I touch, the stainless, the hoods, the teak, the doors, the wood, everything is absolutely top quality. In fact, Fairline used to say the quality was more than skin deep. And what they meant by that is all the things you couldn't see are very high quality too. So as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to quality, this boat like the new Squadron 68 that I recently reviewed, is 10 out of 10. I don't think you can get any better. So that gives it a total score of 40 out of 100, which gives a JB's measure of pleasure of 80%. Planes are so noisy. So noisy. Right. In summary, this boat is a timeless classic. Now... At the beginning of the video, I said, is this the golden age of boat building? I really do think it is, but Fairline are doing this again now on their latest models, which is absolutely fantastic. What other boat can you buy for £300,000 that gives you three cabins, shaft drive, a lovely flyer bridge, a crew cabin, beautiful quality, unbelievable sea keeping there's very very little i can think of that can compete with this for that kind of money and there's one little thing i'll tell you one thing i've noticed about these boats over the last few years as soon as we put them on the market we get a scandinavian or a german or a belgian or dutch buyer come across they come over they love the boat they buy it and they take it straight north and i think that tells you a lot And if we swap round, I'm going to show you my favourite bit of the whole boat. What do you think it is? Probably the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> that is so rude. 